What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and for this one I'm going to keep the intro short just because we have a lot to cover. So I wanted to create a tutorial where I talk about exporting from Revit and exporting everything. So I'm going to be starting off by showing you how to export images, then how to export video, then how to export PDFs, how to export DWG file or AutoCAD files. We're also going to be talking about exporting to Navisworks, that's an important program that's in line with uh, Revit, which is just the next step of building information, modeling, uh, just construction. And then also I'm going to be talking about exporting to IFC, that's a very important uh, building information modeling file format. That's the main BIM file format. And also for your schedules, I'm going to be showing you how to export those uh, into Excel. So uh, that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. And I'm going to be showing you all of the little settings and tips and tricks around exporting files from Revit. And also before I get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe. Uh, I make useful Revit tutorials each week and also I, I make one advanced Balkan Architect course and those courses are available on my Patreon. First link in the, descri in the description. There you can find uh, over 45 hours of content and I take just the extra time to go in depth into all of the advanced Revit topics. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. So let's start off with the first one and that's going to be images. Now for images you can export 3D views but you can also export 2D views so you can export maybe your uh, floor plans if that's something that you want. I actually ac tend to export floor plans as uh, JPEG images just because the local print shop uh, prefers that over PDF or a different file format. Now for exporting images you can export the default views or you can maybe make some renderings or something like that. Now I'm just going to be exporting this uh, regular default 3D view. Now for the 3D view the first thing that we need to do before exporting and this is uh, also true for 2D views is always go here to the view properties and then scroll down to extents, turn on the crop view as well as the crop region visible just so you can crop down your 3D view so it only shows exactly what you want to show. So once you have cropped your view What's going to determine the size of your view is going to be this crop size over here. Now currently as you can see the, the width is 600, 960 millimeters which is quite large. Now this is determined by the scale so here the scale is set to 1 to 100 but if I change it to 1 to 200 and then select the uh, crop go to size crop now as you can see it's a half that. Now if I go to 500 and select this go to crop size now it's uh, 192 millimeters. Now this is quite manageable. You can print this on a small piece of paper, which is really cool. Uh, now for a uh, perspective 3D view like this one over here, uh, you when you select the crop view, just because you don't have the option to change the uh, scale, uh, when you go here to size crop, you can go to uh, set it to scale so it locks proportions, and then you can just manually input a number over here and when you hit apply well nothing will change here but the size of the image when print when uh, saved as a jpeg will be larger so that's the only difference between perspective and uh, orthogonal 3d views now one more thing before we export this let's get rid of these nasty uh, here uh, elements so let's go to visibility graphic overrides in the view properties and then let's go to annotation elements and just uh, uncheck those hit apply okay there we go. Okay, so now once we have this uh, all set up to export, what we need to do is go just here to file, then go to export, uh, scroll all the way down to images and, annota and animations, go to image, and now we have the export image dialog. Now here uh, you s basically choose where you want to save it and how you want to name it. So I'm just going to go here to change and let's save to desktop. Now by default Revit is going to give you the uh, name, uh, the same name as the file name. Now I'm just going to change this to image export. Hit OK. OK, so I already have an image that I saved a bit earlier, but I'm just going to override that one. Now here for the image size, if you go to fit to, it's going to try to fit to pixels and it rarely does a good job. It usually tends to make a very pixelated image, even if you just 
put 10,000 pixels here. So what they tend to do is go with the zoom to option and this is going to make sure that you uh, are fit in the uh, actual scale. So if your floor plan is 1 to 100, if you set this up to zoom to 100, is going to make it exactly 1 to 100 when uh, when exported and if you print it out the scale is going to be correct. Now here for the format you can choose uh, for, with either one of these. Now if you're exporting renderings with a uh, transparent background in that case use PNG or maybe TIFF but for the rest of these I suggest you go with JPEG. Now for the image quality I go with 300 if I tend to print it or if I uh, want to print it and if I'm just going to view it on my computer maybe one to uh, maybe 150 but uh, usually 300 just because I like the crisp image. Now you just click OK again it's asking me just because it's going to replace an existing image I'm just going to click OK and there we go now we have that image exported. Now for the second export and perhaps the most interesting one, we're going to be exporting video out of Revit. Now the only video or the only way to export video out of Revit is to create a walkthrough and here if I go to the project browser and scroll down a little bit you will notice that here we, I do have a walkthrough created. Now if you don't know how to create walkthroughs I do have a tutorial on that and I'm going to be leaving a link to that in the description of this video. Now uh, to export this walkthrough video what you need to do is go again to file, uh, go to export and then uh, let's scroll all the way down here to images and animation, go to walkthrough and here we go. So here you check do you want to export all frames or maybe some frames so then you would go with frame range and then you set up the start and end frames so you do have that option then you have the option to input the total time so how fast this video will be going and how long will it last. And then here you also have the option to set up the visual style. So do you want to go with just simple hidden line or do you want to go with shaded or how, what's, what's the format that you want to use. And then also here you can set up the dimensions. So here it's currently set up to zoom to 82%, which is kind of weird. So I can just set it to 100. Then you hit enter and you basically pick where you want to save it. And as you can see, it can save in numerous format. Now if you save in JPEGs, it's going to give you just a bunch of frames so I suggest you stick with uh, AVI files and then we can call this one uh, walkthrough or export walkthrough and you just hit save and as you can see here a video compression uh, option starts so here you can choose do you want to use some video compression maybe Microsoft video one and then here you can set up the compression ratio and once you're happy with that, uh, you can just click OK and then it will start exporting and you will uh, see the animation as it does that. Now we're going to be talking about exporting to PDF. So that's simple enough. What you need to do is you need to go to one of the views that you want to export. Let's say we want to export this level one. Now again, what you need to do is you need to crop the view and for that you need to turn on the crop region visible. Hit apply. Let's make this smaller. Let's include just the floor plan just like that. Now for exporting PDF it works a bit different than the previous two. When you go here to file you don't go to export but you go to print. So you just click here on print and then for the for the printer you choose the Adobe PDF. Now this uh, the, the reason why I have Adobe PDF here is because I've got some other products from the Adobe uh, suite but if you don't have any products you won't have the Adobe PDF but you will have your default like PDF uh, program so uh, you might uh, have a different one uh, in this case I'm just going to go with the Adobe PDF and here you can find your printers but for now just keep uh, keep your PDF program here. Uh, next uh, we have the option to set up the properties for that but that's really not that important. What is important is here uh, the file uh, location so go to browse let's save on desktop and let's call this one PDF export. Hit save, there we go. And then here you have some settings for the actual uh, view. So you can go to uh, fit to page or you can go with the zoom to option, but you do have to specify uh, what you want to use. So here uh, you, have the, uh, you have the option to create a, 
a, a kind of a, a default print setup but for now let's just set it up manually i'm going to go here with a3 uh, size uh, paper here you can set it up to portal or portrait or landscape we have a couple of options here to offset from corner if that's what you want or you can center it and then uh, just make sure to zoom to 100 in order to retain the actual scale now here for the raster quality set up whatever you want i honestly didn't find any difference between these so i tend to set it to medium and then for colors you can use colors grayscale or black lines and uh, yeah you also have the option for vector processing or raster processing uh, vector processing is going to give you a bit of a smaller file size uh, but it can uh, uh, but uh, but it can get a bit slow when exporting and then raster processing that's just like exporting an image so I, I prefer vector processing just because then you can open it up in other softwares and edit that PDF okay so I'm just going to click OK and then you just click uh, OK again now you can preview it if you want looks like this and then you can just hit print and then it basically exports it now it gives you again the option to uh, to save it but then as soon as you save it it does the export and there we go now it's opening up that uh, PDF file and it's on my second monitor so if I just scroll it uh, put it here this is what we get now let's talk about exporting to CAD or DWG file format now for that again I'm going to use the same floor plan and go here to file and then let's go to export again and here we have the CAD formats now you have multiple options you can choose either one of these uh, I usually export to DWG just because I'm opening it up later on in AutoCAD now here you do have some uh, export settings and these uh, tend to go really in depth so if I just open that up here you can actually set up all of the layers so as you can see each Revit category has its own uh, assigned uh, layer with its own assigned color ID now this is using the default uh, AutoCAD colors so if you know those colors you'll know what this means uh, and if you don't then this doesn't really make any sense to you uh, next we have some options uh, as well here for the projection and then for the cut and that that's pretty much it now here you also have the option for lines to set up the lines set up the patterns texts and fonts colors as you can see it's set up to use the standard uh, index color 255 colors uh, you have the option for solids now this I only changed to the uh, ACIS solids uh, when I was exporting a 3D file for 3D printing but for most uh, uh, DWG exports keep it polymesh and then here you have just a couple of more options uh, here the DWG units you can set that up and uh, the coordinate system as well now once you're done with all of these settings you can export either the current sheet or view or you can set up the sheet list now let's just uh, set up the current view so that's this one over here and then also just go to next and then you choose where you want to save it and here this is really important you can choose an earlier version of AutoCAD I found this uh, really useful uh, when working in practice a lot of companies or individuals tend to use older versions of AutoCAD maybe they just bought AutoCAD in like 2009 and they're still using the same version because they don't need all of the new features so in that case you can just uh, choose one of the earlier uh, versions and then here you have the automatic uh, naming so here you have the options for that now uh, I tend to type in uh, myself so let's call this one export to add and then click OK and Revit will export automatically now if you export to the uh, file to the views like this floor plan it will export the 2d floor plan but if you export a 3d view it will export a 3d model so just be careful what your uh, what view you have open when exporting depending on do you want 2d or 3d geometry next let's talk about exporting to Navisworks so that's simple enough you go here to file you go to export you go to Navisworks and then you just uh, type in whatever you want to type in so let's uh, type in export to Navis and as you can see this is the file type Navis works uh, point dot uh, nwc and then let's save it to desktop just hit save start the process and now it's saved so there you go that's really quick 
Now let's talk about exporting schedules. Now schedules can be exported uh, to uh, just to Excel files. Uh, it's simple enough. What you need to do is open up a schedule. And here I have a simple wall schedule. So what you need to do is go to file, uh, go to export, scroll all the way down and here we have reports and here we have the option to export schedules. So you just click there to schedule and then you can save it here on desktop. Let's call it wall schedule. Now as you can see it will save it as a text file so .txt file and that's okay so just hit save here you have a couple of options I, I suggest you just click OK and then uh, you have to open up Excel here we go so once you open up Excel uh, you go to file and then you go into open and then you have to go to desktop find that file and here instead of all Excel files go with just all files here we go and let's find that file the export to okay here's the wall schedule you hit open and then you'll get this little text import wizard you just uh, hit finish and as you can see it will import that uh, it will import that uh, whole schedule and then you can just resize it here but it does a decent job it's not perfect but it, it does get the job done. So there you go, there's our wall schedule exported from Revit into Excel. And finally, let's talk about exporting the IFC file format. Now that's the like the, the default BIM format. And for that, what you need to do is go here to file and then go to export. Uh, just scroll a bit down here we have the IFC now here you do have some options to modify the setup here you have some general options about the version additional content you want to export to the planned elements uh, properties uh, property sets uh, also and then also the level of detail you can set that up to maybe something higher and then you have a few uh, additional advanced settings now I'm just going to cancel out of that here you have to browse and find where you want to save that Let's say we want to save it to desktop. Let's call this one export IFC. And then once you're done here, as you can see, the type will be IFC SPF. Hit save, hit export, and there we go. Okay, guys, so that's how you export from Revit into numerous different file formats. I hope you have found this uh, interesting and exciting and I hope you have learned something new. So if you have any additional com comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you want to explore some of these uh, these in, uh, in depth, you can find some other tutorials in the description of this video where I explain some of these and also check out my advanced Balkan architect courses on my Patreon. First, a link in the description. Also, there you can find this project file as well as all of, of, all of my other Revit project files. I've got all over 500 files so far. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, quick tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.